Hey everyone, welcome back to this Tosca playlist and we are going to continue with our API testing series. So this is the part three of this series and if you have not watched the earlier parts then go ahead and watch it uh, on our channel. So now that uh, we have scanned our URI and all the different uh, messages, the structure and functions of the API are already created for us uh, in our API scan. So now uh, we are going to take the next step, which is to uh, create test cases from this particular uh, messages, right? So that will do in Tosca Commander. And for this particular uh, session, I have created uh, or I have opened the Tosca API scan from the commander. Okay, so I haven't opened it uh, from the standalone version. I have opened it from the Tosca commander. Okay, so for this purpose, um, I am going to use three different messages. Okay, API messages, and these are uh, the first is post. Okay, and this was basically uh, it will add. A new pet to this pet store okay and I have changed the name here to max okay and the remaining uh, payload is still the same and then um, we are going to use the get pet by ID okay in this uh, we need to pass uh, a pet ID you can see here it's a path parameter so I have provided a value here okay and then uh, in delete um, I'm going to provide a API key and a pet ID. Okay, so this is going to delete uh, this particular pet which uh, was created earlier. Okay, so basically three API messages or request. Uh, first will uh, is a post request which will uh, add a new pet uh, into the pet store and then the get pet by ID which is a get request which will get the information uh, from the pet store of this pet new pet. Uh, using the ID and then uh, we'll finally delete uh, the new pet which was created on the pet store okay so these three uh, API requests we'll be using okay now I've already tested and these are uh, working fine but what we want to do is uh, we want to uh, create our test cases so that we can verify some of the values here right and to do this as I said earlier we have to uh, basically export our API test case okay and how we can do that is uh, we have to actually select the individual messages okay so don't forget this otherwise um, it will only export the single uh, request which is selected or message which is selected at the present you have to select all the messages which you want to export okay also what we have to do as we have to create a separate component folder for this otherwise it is going to uh, create this or uh, export this into the root folder which is not ideal okay so let's create a component folder and i'm going to name it api testing okay inside this api testing um, and you have to make sure that it is selected before you export your uh, api messages so once it is selected, okay, go ahead and uh, go to API test case and go to export. Okay, now uh, Tosca is exporting all these messages and it will automatically create the required uh, folders and the required structure for these API messages. Okay, so let's go back to Tosca commander and now you can see under this component folder, we have got these modules. Okay. Now, surprisingly, you will see that we had got three messages, but now we have got six modules. Okay, so don't get confused. Uh, the reason for this is for each message. Okay, uh, Tosca has created one um, request type and one response type. Okay, so for post, we have a request and response. For delete, we have a request and response. And for get, we have a request and response. Okay, because we'll be sending a request and we'll be receiving a response. Okay, and similarly, we have got a test cases folder. Okay, and here also uh, under each message, you will see that we have got two requests or uh, two uh, test steps, which is one is post um, and 
one is request and one is response okay so uh, tosca creates uh, everything for you uh, the module the structure the test cases okay and uh, the request and response okay everything is created but after this we have to make some configuration changes and uh, also we need to put some verifications so that we can execute these test cases okay so now um, let's go to one of these modules okay and uh, this is a post uh, at pat request uh, you can always rename these modules um, as per your application it's always recommended but um, what we have to see is now uh, inside this api modules okay there is an extra tab called technical view this is not available uh, when you scan your other applications but it is available when you scan your apis okay and this is the exact view uh, which was present in the api scan window okay so it has got all the information for the api message the endpoint the method the resource okay the header information the payload now let's see how we can execute this api request right from our test cases without even going to api scan right since we have now captured everything under modules which is present in the technical view we can directly go ahead and execute this test cases okay so for example if i execute this post request and response to add a pet so it will uh, execute fine right but in the log you won't be able to see much because we haven't captured anything right so there are no verifications and uh, we are also not capturing the status code uh, it is only displaying the server response time which is not very useful right so if you want to test a uh, api uh, we should be verifying uh, at least the status code which is returned by the response right and for that we need to add some attributes to this module so in the api modules these attributes are nothing but uh, the elements of the payload or the status code or the response time or uh, the parameters right so whatever is contained inside the api message we can add them as module attributes and these are also known as business parameters because then uh, you can change these values in your test cases okay so for example if i want to verify this post request right and I want to verify the status code. So what I can do, I can select the status code and I can click on add at the top of the API testing tab. Okay, so this is going to add a module attribute or business parameter for status code. Okay, similarly, I can add all of these payload items into this particular module attributes as module attributes, right? So if I select everything and uh, click on add then it is going to add all the different attributes into this module okay and once we add that it will also get reflected in our uh, test case okay so if i go back to my test case now uh, you can see under the test step i can see an additional uh, test right test step which is for status code and also i can pass a value here okay so there are two ways to do that uh, there will be the default value which is captured by the scan okay and uh, you can see all the values are already here which has been captured so we can select any of these values so i'm going to select 200 okay because that's what it should um, return and then i'm going to select the action mode verify okay so uh, this is uh, one of the verification you can do on your uh, particular request okay now um if i go ahead and run this again so this time around in the log info you can see that the status code verification was successful and it will show you the expected and actual value so this is the actual testing of your api right now you are actually testing the api because you are checking something you are verifying something and you have to make sure that these verifications are at least there for every post or any uh, get request right so at least the status code should be verified now let's try to verify some more things on this particular post request because uh, when it returns the response it is also returning us the payload right and that will contain uh, certain elements which we want to verify uh, when we send this particular request 
So let's go back to our response and here you will see uh, what we want to verify is maybe the name, right? And maybe the ID uh, which we'll be using later on. But right now we, we may not be verifying this particular ID, okay? But um, let's go ahead and verify this name uh, which we are sending, okay? So um, what we'll do is we will add this particular name as a business parameter here, okay? And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to also add this, okay, name uh, into this particular request. And that's because uh, you can see the name is a little different here. Uh, I changed it here, but I did not run this before I scanned this particular API. Okay, so that's why it has captured the name from my previous run. But right now we can we can do that. We can change that. Okay, so I've added the name as a parameter here. And if I go back to my request now, go to details uh, here in the name. I am going to select max, okay? Um, and also in the response, I'm going to verify uh, whether it is max or not, okay? So there are two verifications now for my uh, response and also I am sending a different value on the request, okay? Using uh, the business parameter. So let's see if this works or not. So let's go ahead and run this now. Okay, so uh, the test case has passed, okay? Uh, it was able to send the request and uh, both verifications were successful. The status code was 200, okay? And uh, the name was also matching, which is now max instead of something else, right? So now you can see that I can verify correctly whether my request and response are actually matching or they have been scanned properly, right? Because we saw that previously uh, it was not scanned properly because my post request had a different name and uh, my response had a different name, right? Because it was scanned from a previous execution. So uh, even if you scan your API, you should not be sure that you are sending the right details. So that all the values which you are going to send to, for a request or the details which is required to process that request, it should be configured, okay? and that configuration value should go in your test case when you are executing it and similarly uh, while you are receiving a response you have to verify that um, the expected values are present in your api response okay so this is how you can create your test cases in tosca commander by exporting it from the api scan and also you can put some verifications you can create business parameters uh, from your API uh, messages and then uh, verify them. So next uh, we are going to talk about how we can actually uh, use this uh, or we can buffer these values, right? The ID which is coming back from the response because we need this to verify our or to send our get and delete request which requires a path parameter which is the ID, right? So in order to use this ID from the response, we need to store it somewhere or we need to basically buffer that value. And once we buffer that value, then we can use that uh, in our other request. So that is what we are going to look in our next video where we use the buffer uh, method or the buffer um, action mode to basically buffer different values from the response and use it in other get request where that um, ID or any other value can be used uh, by buffering those, okay? So that's all for this video. Hopefully this was helpful uh, in understanding how you can work with uh, API messages and then uh, export them back to your Tosca commander and create test cases out of it, right? We'll see a lot more of, uh, on this uh, by continuing in our next video. So keep watching and uh, do tune in to our channel to watch the next video on API testing. Until then, keep learning and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.